Hey there, it's Sonia Miller, coach, speaker, and best-selling author, and I help overworked, underfulfilled women to receive what they most want by unlearning struggle. So today I'm going to address the question, how do I express my point of view in a loving way that doesn't threaten another person's values? And this was inspired by a question written in by one of the students in the course I'm currently teaching called the Receive Course, where we learn how to receive our fulfillment by unlearning struggle. So this is her question. It's a little on the long side, but I really wanted to offer the full, the full thing because it's something that's relevant to everyone, especially in our uh, presidential election season. It's politically oriented. Hi, Sonia. My question is based around feeling safe in full expression. I'm part of a monthly book club that's been focused on personal growth, yet recently the book suggestions have been getting more political. The most recent being A Citizen's Guide to Beating Donald Trump. As a citizen, me, who lives in a democratic state, but was raised Republican, and I probably lean more towards libertarian now, I keep quiet because it doesn't feel safe to say that I don't have the same perspective as others regarding our current president. And there's more to it. It's along the lines of being a closet Republican. I realize they would never understand for they haven't lived my life or have my values. And I've tried hard to understand their point of view. And I even struggle to see things from the other view. My question is, how does one express their viewpoint in a loving and safe way to not threaten another person's values but also, how do I be vulnerable and not be shamed? Great, juicy question. So because I'm all about unlearning struggle, I'd like to offer a less is more tip. There's a lot we could talk about here today, but I'd like to focus on one particular concept today and really unpack it. So the less is more tip is this. Standing for versus fighting against elevates possibilities. Now, in the Receive course and in everything I've been teaching these days about receiving, one of the things that we illuminate is the difference between a masculine model of power and manifestation versus a feminine model of power or manifestation. And we use two symbols to really sort of explore these ideas. A lot of the struggle that we experience is learned struggle. And the learned struggle is based on an over-reliance on a masculine model of power. There's another model of power, which is feminine. And when we're balanced, we don't struggle as much. But when we don't know how to access the feminine model of power, we over-rely on the masculine, and that's a lot of hard work. Why is it so, so much hard work? because the masculine model is based on the hunter's approach to manifestation. So the hunter or the masculine pursues, hunts, has a target, um, looks for something out on the horizon, operates from the perspective that that thing that they want isn't here, I have to hunt it. So there's a lot of action and thinking and performing and doing and, and you know, a hunter has to kill and chase and beat down maybe and conquer. That's a lot of hard work. Now, when it's in balance to the feminine, then our action is based in wisdom and is energetically balanced, okay? But when the feminine perspective is missing, again, a lot of unnecessary struggle. It also causes distortions because we're relying on something with something else missing. That gets over relied upon. Now, the feminine model of power is based on the flower as our symbol. And the flower is simply beingness. She stands present in her space, rooted. And she receives all day long everything she needs and most of what she wants all she does is receive, 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 receive. So the feminine is about being, the masculine is about doing. The feminine is about presence, the masculine is about performance, okay? So let's look at how it applies to this scenario, okay? The first piece being about feeling unsafe and vulnerable. We will feel unsafe and vulnerable 
when we're trying to control something that's beyond our control and when we're going against our core values, who we are, in other words, what we stand for. So when we are in these political types of conversations and we think that it is our job to sort of convince the other person to see our point of view or to convince them or somehow talk them into changing their point of view, when we actually think that because there's going to be conflict, all we can do is be in fighting mode and fighting may go against your core values, which might be harmony and unity and collaboration, that's gonna cause a lot of vulnerability, okay? And when we get put on the defensive or we, we think that we have to put somebody else on that defensive, that win-lose model, that's gonna create a lot of vulnerability and a lot of right-wrong thinking and shame is based in wrongness. Shame is the internalized belief that there's something wrong with us at the deepest level, okay? So what I would like to offer for this particular student and for anyone that relates to this is try on for size a feminine model of power when it comes to this differing of point of view or potential conflict. And let go of the idea that you have to defend yourself or prove yourself, or convince the other person, or that this conflict can only be looked at through the lens of the hunter and fighting and win-lose, and shift instead to standing for what you believe in. What if you simply stand for what you believe in and let the other person stand for what they believe in? and let go of this idea of fighting, convincing, conquering, any of that. So let me go a little bit deeper into what this looks like. So when you are in, I stand for something, you are in your power because you are owning your space. This is my space. This is what I believe in. And open up to exploring what your values are. Put your energy on you and your values rather than on them and their values. What do you believe in? What do you stand for? You have power over that, okay? You also have the power to stand for your values. What does that mean? Well, you don't have to go over into their space. You simply stand like the flower in your space and shine your light. Just shine, shine, shine. Anyone who wants that illumination will be grateful for it. And if nothing else, it doesn't cause any conflict. It doesn't cause any fighting. Have you ever seen a flower fight? No. She just stands there emitting her fragrance and being colorful. And those who want to be around her come around her. And some of them didn't even know she existed. So they're grateful for the contribution that she offers simply by standing and shining. So it's a contribution and it illuminates, elevates new possibilities for people without having to deal with conflict or fighting. And finally, the flower energy and where you have your power in standing for is you have clear boundaries. This is where that other element of safety and lovingly, okay? You're not in the other person's space. You stand in your space. You have boundaries. And if you do find that there's a fighting energy coming towards you, you can have strong boundaries and say, look, I'm not in your space. I'm not telling you what to think or what to do. I'm in my space. I'm sharing my truth, okay? And then if they want to be in your space, you get to say what the rules of engagement are. If they come at you from an attacking mode, you'll say, you know what? You can leave now. You're not allowed in the space, okay? For example, that's a stance that I took on some of my own sharing of my values on my own social media platforms, okay? I didn't go insert myself in other people's spaces. I stand in my space. I share my truth. Those who want it can join in. Those who might fight me or attack me, which I don't really invite, I already know that they're not allowed in my space. So there's no fighting. There's no insertion. They're simply standing. I have clear boundaries and I'm very clear about the rules of engagement. So that's where your power is. 
you own your space, you stand for your values, and you have your clear boundaries, and you're the queen or the flower that determines the rules of engagement with you, okay? And then on the other side of that, just to compare it, the fighting energy is where you don't have any power. That's part of why you feel unsafe, okay? You cannot control, you have no power over their reactions to you. You have no power over whether or not you could change their value. You you can't have control over that, okay? And you also have no power or say in their space. So you don't insert yourself, right? Which, because your core value is not to fight, it's safe and loving, you don't have to fight. I think the piece that was missing for this particular student was she didn't have the alternative to the masculine, which is instead of fighting for, she could, I'm sorry, fighting against, she could stand for. And that's what causes a lot of fear for people with these different points of view and conflict is most people only know or believe I have to fight and I don't like fighting and I don't know how to fight and I'm bad at it and I'm going to lose and I'm afraid of being attacked. Well, there is an alternative. And the standing for is so powerful. It is so incredibly powerful. You don't have to fight against war. You can stand for peace. And part of the practice of a standing for approach is what I call the broken record approach. You know what you stand for, you know your values, and then repeat, 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 repeat. You're shining your light. And people who are looking for it, listening for it, it will reach them. That's the beacon. That's the flower. That's the fragrance. That's the power of being a light. So... With that, I'd like to offer you what I call your receiving opportunity, okay? When you find yourself in a conflict or friction or there's differing points of view, okay, if you're feeling vulnerable or anxious, consider that you might be entering their space, thinking that you need to defend yourself or insert yourself or unconsciously that maybe you think you're supposed to fight, And if that's occurring, notice, because your body will tell you, I'm feeling nervous, I'm feeling vulnerable, I want to hide, I don't know what to do, okay? And instead say, oh, I'm going to come back to my space. I'm going to put the energy on me, get clear about what I stand for, what my space is, what my boundaries are, what my rules of engagement are. Put your attention there and then go back to what do I stand for? Shine your light, shine your light, shine your light. All right. I hope this is helpful. This is a passionate topic for me because it really lends itself to leadership. And we are all leaders, whether we accept it or not, whether we want to admit it or not. We impact everyone around us. Okay. No one's invisible. Each one of us has an impact. The question is, are you are the people around you going to be positively effective, negatively affected, or cheated of the difference you could have made? So this is a way to make a difference rather than hide when we're afraid, rather than holding back. If this was helpful, if this was useful, I hope you will like, share, subscribe, sign up for notifications if you'd like. And if you want to go deeper with learning how to unlearn struggle to receive your fulfillment, please consider checking out my free introductory webinar, receiveclass.com. You'll get to go deeper with this and other concepts and uh, come back. I'll see you at the next video. Thanks. Bye-bye.